So I'm going to start off and we're going to finish up chapter one of The Enormous Egg by Oliver Butterworth. It was so big it took up just around the whole nest and there was the hen teetering on the edge of the box with her head tilted to one side, looking at that egg as if she couldn't figure out where it was. I touched it and it had a kind of leathery shell, more like a turtle egg, and it was a sort sort of longish shape and big as a as a mushmelon or even maybe or even bigger maybe. Never seen the word mushmelon before. That's funny. I ran back to the house and yelled out that our hen had just laid the biggest egg in the world and hurry up and look at it before it explodes or something. We all tore out to the hen house and I was afraid the egg would be gone, but there it was and the hen was sitting on top of it doing her best to cover it. She looked kind of puzzled as if this wasn't quite what she had expected, but she was going to make the best of it anyways. I sort of admired her for that. Pop thought it was some kind of trick at first, and he looked at me out of the corner of his eye. But when we lifted the hen off the egg and looked it over carefully, they all agreed it was a real egg, but a queer one. Pop scratched his head and looked at the chicken, and then at the egg, and then back to the chicken again. It doesn't seem possible, he said. The egg's almost as big as he, she is. How could she do it? But what will we do, do with it? My sister asked. We could all have it for breakfast, Pop suggested. How many minutes would you boil an egg that size? We will not have it for any breakfast, Mom said. I won't have that thing in my kitchen. It looks like a snake's egg to me. Some snake, Pop said, but I asked why not keep it and let the hen sit on it till it hatched, and then we could see what would come out of it. Nothing good, I'm certain of that, Mom said. It would probably be something horrible. But just remember, if it's a crocodile or a dragon or something like that, I won't have it in my house for one minute. Very well, Miss Twitchell. Pop said, winking at me. We'll promise not to bring any dragons into the house. He lifted the hen back on top of the enormous egg, and she slipped around and fluttered her wings, trying to get her balance up there. We all went back to the house for breakfast. Pop said the egg would give him something besides local gossip to put in the newspaper for a change. Cynthia wasn't as excited about the big egg as I was, but she would have been if she'd known what was going to hatch out of it. All right, I'm gonna move along to chapter two. Taking care of that egg was an awful chore. The trouble, that, the trouble was that the thing was so big that the poor hen couldn't handle it. You see, when a hen sits on her eggs, she keeps turning them over every now and then so they'll get warmed evenly all around. I guess everyone must know that anyway, but Pop says when you're writing something, you can't take anything for granted because you never know who might read it. So if I start explaining something you know about already, just skip that part and go on. I suppose there might be somebody who lived in a city all this life and he wouldn't, all his life, excuse me, and he wouldn't know too much about how a hen takes care of her eggs and things like that. So I guess I better take Pop's advice and explain things as I go along. He must know what he's talking about. What with his newspaper and all? Well, this hen couldn't budge that big egg, so I had to come in there, come in three or four times a day and turn it over for her. I piled the straw up good around it to, keep, to help keep it warm, 
and between the two of us, we managed pretty well in the daytime, but it kept me kind of busy. Luckily, school was over by this time, or I don't think I could have done it. As it was, it cut into my fishing some t something terrible. I'd no sooner get out on the loon lake in the rowboat and throw back a couple of sunfish that got caught by mistake when it would be time to cut back home and turn over that egg. And the hen would get fidgety if I stayed way too long. I guess she expected me to be right on time. I was afraid for a while that she wasn't going to stay on the job, but she did, and so did I. I didn't know what to do about nighttime because mom said she didn't want me getting up in the middle of the night and pop agreed with her. They figured it might interfere with my sleep and maybe they were right, but I would have done it anyways. I would have done almost anything to have that egg hatch out. You don't have a chance like that every day. Anyway, Pop said he turned the egg over before he went to bed at night, and if I turned it over the first thing in the morning, then we'd leave the rest up to fate. I don't know what that, what he meant by fate exactly, because one night I had poison ivy on my leg and couldn't sleep very good. So I got up and went out to the hen house to turn the egg, since I was awake anyway. And who should I meet coming out of the hen house but Pop? He kind of coughed in an embarrassed way and said he couldn't get to sleep because it was so hot. So he'd just come out to see that everything was all right. I noticed it was 3 a.m. by the clock in the kitchen. I asked him at breakfast if he'd been getting up every night like that. Pop poked around in his cereal bowl as if he'd found a button or something, and then he said he wouldn't lose his sleep over any egg, no matter how big it was. It was only when he was awake anyway that he went out to the hen house, he said. Mom smiled a little at the corner at the corner.